Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is a Gotham Gavel movie review. You're watching Gotham Cinebites, and I'm Terry. I'm Lindsay. And today, we're finally unwrapping and reviewing the 2022 version of Hellraiser. Directed by David Bruckner. <clears throat> it stars Jamie Clayton as Pinhead, and... Just right off the bat, what'd you what'd you think of her? Amazing. Yeah. I I mean, I had a good feeling after seeing all the photos. Yeah. We watched a few interviews. Mm -hmm. She did not disappoint. None of the Cenobites did. In fact, to me, the best part of this is the box and the Cenobites. <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, alrighty. So, main characters start with, uh, I guess, the head guy. That starts the story and kind of is in the backgrounds and shows up at the end again is Voight. And then you got Riley, who's a main character, and her boyfriend Trevor. Um, her brother's boyfriend, Colin. I mean, those are the real main, main characters. Mm -hmm. uh, some smaller characters are probably her brother, and they have a roommate. And then that's pretty much you know, all we need to just talk about. I mean, the rest are, are Cenobites. And uh, so, yeah, we'll get into the story. It's a two-hour movie, and I know we're not very captivating people. I've been told I'm monotone. <laughs> so I'm gonna, alone. I'm going to try to be brief. Um, yeah, there's a lot of story. It's and just... It could go on and on and on, so we're just going to be brief. Um, so this box and this movie, um, it's not like your typical, what I was referring to as a... I guess one-offs where it's just one and done. Um, this box is different um, as it takes people um, or people that you can actually have the blade pop out and you can choose who you're sacrificing. Um, then the box will change into different configurations. So it does this six times. And to do that, um, you need to kill six people. And then at the end, at the final configuration, the Cenobites come and they give you a choice. Um, Go through the six. <clears throat> and these um, these six configurations are lament as the box regular cube that we know, and that's life. Uh, the second one is lore, which is knowledge. Uh, third one is lo lauderant, which is love. Liminal is sensation. Lazarus is a resurrection. And then finally you have Leviathan, which is power. So once you do all six and you're still breathing, they give you a choice of one of those six options. And in the beginning, you see our main character, Void, um, is actually at the end of it. You come to find out later, I believe he chose the liminal, or whatever the sensation one was. And I guess either any way you choose, I mean, the Cinnabites kind of give you their version of what, of what it is. So they kind of use this machine, and like it pierces through him, and it's tied to all of his nerve nerves. endings. So every 20 seconds or so, it turns his nerves, and pretty much makes him like impossible like to numb himself he was saying i think it was yeah he has to feel everything yeah he's in constant pain so to keep it brief um our main character riley um her boyfriend trevor um, well, her boyfriend trevor we find out at the end um is working for Voight, and he kind of isn't happy with his decision and the bullshit that's in him so he's kind of hired Trevor um, to break in, get the box, and put it in this girl's hands. And hopefully either have her start it or, you know, pretty much make it to the end where they can make a choice again. So to start, I mean, we lose. She loses her brother. Then um, it's uh, Void's lawyer. They find her, the same woman in the beginning. Um... She's the second configuration death. Then, is it the roommate? 
Is that, is that next? I think so. Roommate and then Chatterer. The roommate and then, yeah, Chatterer. Chatterer. That's so fucking stupid. Yeah, that was... <laughs> we'll get to it. Yeah. Um, Chatterer. And then... God, I feel like we're missing one. The roommate was in the van, correct? Right. The roommate, the brother, the lawyer... Chatterer. Oh, no. Fuck. So upon further inspection and discussion, and I guess I should have known I've seen it more times, there's a, there's a point where she's about to, to say fuck it and throw the box, and Pinhead appears and kind of pulls out of her hand and cuts her. So I guess Riley is number five. She counts. That's so, such a weird twist. And then Chatterer. So I'm... Um, and then, of course, at the end, um, Voight picks it up and cuts Colin, which is her brother's boyfriend. So they're kind of going after him at the end, but then she gets away. And while Voight's having his um, choice and discussion with Pinhead, um, the gasp Cenobite is going after Colin. And, but Riley finds her and says, no, I didn't choose him. So she's, you know, you want another so she stabs Trevor, and Trevor's the final one taken. So, in the end, in Pinhead and Void's discussion, he chooses, well, I guess she's kind of forces him to choose power, which is Leviathan. Um, shit falls out of him, and then what I liked is the regeneration scene of his chest. Is that like, great. It's so much better than the original Hellraiser Frank scene. Yeah. But, um... Only to get stabbed by a chain and, and anyways in the same spot and lifted up to the heavens. And um, we see him at the end actually become a Cenobite. So I guess that's what Leviathan or power means. Um, you get taken, converted, and then you can use the power. So the very end, um, the only survivors um, is Colin and Riley. And Riley makes her choice, which is l lament or life. So her choice is basically um, she has to live with all the people around her that died and lament. And so she's going to be, I guess, regretting what's happened the rest of her life. And her big choice could have been resurrection, which was bringing her brother back. Yeah, that was the original. She has a conversation with Void, and Void has that shit inside of him, and he kind of tells her like all of their gifts are bullshit. So. I yeah. mean, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's, I think, general enough of the story. I mean, it's on Hulu. I implore you guys all, go watch it. Um, if you're a Hellraiser fan, it's well worth it. And besides the original four, it's my favorite, for sure. So, dislikes. I uh, will start because I know I my... I have the same one, though. I know my main dislike is probably one of yours. And we've already covered it. Okay, so... The Shatterer comes out of the ground and is coming after them. And he kind of barricades Trevor and Riley behind this gate. And, of course, she still has the shit open and there's and one of the blades is up. So you think, you know, maybe she's going to sacrifice Trevor. But then yep. she stabs Chatterer and Chatterer just kind of stops. Like, oh shit, he knows. And he backs up and then Pinhead kills him. So, that's my main gripe with this movie and I think the first time I saw it it was just like fuck it I was pissed the rest of the movie so I don't like I'm all for a Cenobite dying yeah that's fine but the fact that she stabs him with the box and he's one of the sacrifices to me is ridiculous it shouldn't count because why he's already a part of the world exactly why wouldn't one just fucking stab all these motherfuckers there's fucking seven of them well I mean at that point I <laughs> I would have been immediately okay well if this one works I'm definitely going after the rest and it takes and they kind of they kind of get to that decision but it kind yeah, of backfires and blows up in their face right but, but like in general though overall I thought that was a very weird decision plus I mean on the like, writers <laughs> we finally I mean, it's a new, it's, it's a new, we were reset, we got all these awesome Cenobites, but we still got Pinhead and Chatterer, but Chatterer's fucking done. Yeah, and he was really cool looking too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll get into that. That's but my yeah. main dislike. My other one, real quick, mm -hmm. is it takes away, 
um, the single encounter, I feel like. No longer are the scum of the earth um, opening this box, and they come, get them, and go away. Now this scummy motherfucker can sacrifice six other fucking people. I mean, it's just, there's no, there's no single encounter anymore. Now he can take out six people, and then this motherfucker who's killed six people gets to have a choice at the end. I guess that's a good and a bit of a bad thing about the story. It's like the rules are just so different. Yeah, it's the There's same, really no rules. It's the same world. I mean, the same lore. But just, I love the box. And I love all the different configurations. But at the same time, <clears throat> it's just it takes out the single encounter. But that's my only two dislikes. Mm. I my di- I only have a dislike, um, and that was the chatterer dying. I just I thought that was just a very weird choice because again he's already a part of the, and again, the like, world. It just seems strange. I'm all for sending the bite to die. I mean they yeah, all I don't, they all die in Hellraiser too. But as but far as it him, counting as a death when it's already he's not yours to sacrifice. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. He he should not have been part of the. It's that's strange. <laughs> So about likes. Uh, likes. Um, I've got quite a few. Um, overall, I actually genuinely enjoyed the story. Um, I actually, I thought it was a very awesome modern update. Um, I liked the, I liked the, ch- I like how it ended. Um, Riley's choice. I think that was the his first initial reaction. Like he hated it. Well, again, I was probably butt hurt about the chatterer, and then I was all pissed that. So all these people die and she gets to just live. But I mean seeing She's it, got a lot of regret to live seeing with. Seeing it two more times, I mean I definitely it was first reactions, you know. Yeah. It's it's a it's a good story. It's a great story. It really is. Overall it's a really good story. I love the box. I love that it's an actual puzzle box and it changes. Yeah. Um I thought it was a little strange and interesting how like with the hook it almost like desensitizes them a little bit gets them a, or anest- Well you can't just have them running away. Uh, <laughs> I but, guess. Yeah, I mean yeah, kind of like That was a little inter- that was different. I mean Yeah, they um, kind of go loopy instead of just running away. I mean they're, Yeah, I mean it's mainly like Don't just, go nowhere we're coming. Right. <laughs> Um, the cinematography was really great overall. Yeah. Um, the acting was really good. Um, everyone was good. Everyone to me, was good except, except her the, brother. The the weakling was definitely the brother. He wasn't horrible. Um, it was definitely an overachiever. <laughs> yeah, but this film overall was way better than way better than the last one we just saw. I still stand by what I said in the last review and that this is the best one after the first four. First four. I agree with that. And 100%. I am I'm very much looking forward and I hope he gets a chance to do another one. I think there's <clears> more <throat> that I wanted to say that I just can't. Uh, well, the Cinebites themselves. Yeah, the Cinebites I mean, were great. They they stand out. And I know a lot of people are complaining that they're just skinned. But, I mean, I, I think it it's really well done and... I don't miss the leather, I mean. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, I almost had, like, a hard time believing they were going to bring back all the bondage-looking leather. When it... I I think the body modification, the way they did it, is more... Is definitely more of a modern take. You know, it just... It needed a fresh update. The only thing that I want to pick at were the pearls. (laughs) Well, I think they looked good on Pinhead. Yeah, but, but why did they, they have to um, be on everybody else? The little pearl things. I mean, they're they're seen throughout all the Cenobites, and I think I don't I don't have a What's problem with it. What's the significance with the pearls? Just because <clears throat> it's a female? No, no. I mean, they're on they're on everybody. I mean, I know, but why pearls? I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It looks great. I just thought, meh. pins would have been <laughs> fine too. <sighs> I don't have a problem with it. I don't dislike it, but I just thought it was a little. But, um, mm. um, I the variety, like all the different. I, there was more females too. I thought well, that I was kind of cool. Before we get into the Cenobites, did oh, you? Oh, I thought we were already in it. Did you want to any more likes? Like any more standout moments? Um. Well, I didn't see it coming. That I did. That Trevor 
was a betrayer. You could tell, first of all, he's a delivery driver and he has this freaking amazing apartment with all these really nice pieces of furniture. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it was too obvious. Yeah, I was like, he either comes from, like, wealth and he gets to be a bum, drug addict, you know, whatever, recovering addict, sorry. Um, but there was just something about it. And then he was very, like, just, he didn't want to go near the box. There was just too many coincidences. I don't think I saw he it ever touches the box with his skin. Like, there's a few times where he tries to grab it and take it. Because you feel like, I feel like he regrets giving it to her because he really likes her. But, yeah, in the beginning, I mean, he doesn't touch it. She grabs it. Um, when he tries to ditch it, he's covering it with a towel. Mm-hmm. It's like he knew and he didn't want to yeah, fucking he, take any chances. He ex- didn't want to touch it. Exactly. It was... So. But that's okay. I I mean, yeah. So, I yeah. saw it coming. <laughs> All right, so we will... <clears throat> All right, so with Cenobites, um, I guess, first and foremost, the star of the show is Pinhead. Of course, and then I'm going to show all these individually, and then the group shot that I'm looking at. <laughs> but we have the Weeper, which um I think is pretty cool. Is this the first time you ever see other colored skin besides white people? So the the Weeper um is a black woman. Um, the S the S fix <laughs> is the one with that thing over its head, and I mean. I feel for it because I mean I breathe I breathe heavy like that thing all the time, <laughs> and it was interesting. I mean it looks very feminine, very feminine, but it was a male. But it was actor. A, it was a, it was a man. Um, the gasp. Um, it seems like she's uh, her second lieutenant. I mean I know Chatterer is the second lieutenant in the older story, but the gasp kind of definitely gave off second in command. And then, of course, we have the guy taking the bullet for us all, um, the chatterer. Um, and that guy was like seven foot tall. I mean, I'm going to show you pictures later of him standing next to the director. But uh, and then the mask, um, which, I mean, I'm going to link a video that I watched in the description. Just um, someone interviewing the, the special effects artists. And he's wearing a green sock, so that's how they're able to make it just look like he's a face with them that's the mask and last but not least is the mother which i think is one of the coolest looking ones but you really see her for two, two seconds. seconds but i'm um, in the behind the scenes pictures you can tell that it's it's a pregnant woman who somehow is a cinnabite the makeup is incredible yeah just like the way the way her shit tell. is skinned it, it almost gives off a nun vibe so yeah so. it looked really neat I feel like, and I said it before, I mean, these are the best Cenobites in any movie now and going forward, I think. I can't wait to see the next one, because you see Voight transformed at the end. and So he's going to be in the ranks next movie, Have no they doubt. talked, I mean, it's only been a week, so there's no discussions on making anymore. I don't think so, but I know, I know the special effects so, people would because- be down. With Voy, the way um, he's turned into, I, I want to know more about him. Like he, yeah. this house that they're yeah. in that, that is like the. Uh, what, what what was I trying to say? And it's like a trap. It was almost like a trap, an elaborate mansion trap, yeah. with all he, these. It looks like a box that the windows yeah. and doors. He even says it to Riley yeah. that um, or to Pinhead, because she he has him. All different Cenobites trapped in one part of the house at one point, and he mm-hmm. pretty much trying to like get your god to fix me, or I'm gonna keep all of his minions trapped. <laughs> yeah, and like the the way the the ceiling too. I mean, it's just it's extremely elaborate. Yeah. And it, once the end game kickstarts with the last person being cut, um. Which the it, world kind of opens up, and it's like it's remnants of Hellraiser 2 with the labyrinth yes. world. And you see the house Le- Levi- in the middle. Yeah. And you see Leviathan, Leviathan coming, coming down. down out of the sky. And yeah, I mean, it's... There are a few good nods to the yeah. old Hellraiser movies. The, some of the quotes and in that part, particularly that scene. I don't think we talked scene. about yet is the music. Oh, I the mean, music this was is great. This yes. one of the first Hellraiser movies where like, I want to buy the soundtrack. The song in the beginning with the loud bass type stuff as at the end too but and then the nods to the original score was pretty great 
Yeah, I agree. That was really nice hearing and see. <clears throat> Definitely. Okay, was there anything else you wanted to talk about? I don't think so. I'm sure there is as soon as we stop this. There always is. There's always something. But, I mean, overall, I really thoroughly enjoyed This is the first Hellraiser movie I want to see again. I haven't seen it three times, and I can go watch it right now. I mean, that's... <laughs> that. I mean... It's, 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 it's just a really cool modern take on it. It's different. Um... I mean, look at me. I still love Paul, but I wanted to see that get a sequel. But yeah, this, I mean, I love you, Paul. This will make you forget that. <laughs> yeah, this is... It's really good. Yeah, I agree. Every, yeah, if you're so, a horror fan, you should definitely check it out. What is your final rating of this movie? This one's a four and a half for me. Four and a half. Yeah, it's damn good. So I guess we're only going to agree one time then, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, some of them I kind of would... Anyways, well, we're moving forward. This well, one's a four and a half. Solid. Look, it's fresh, and maybe I'll change it later. But I think as of right now, sure, I'll go ahead and agree with you. Four and a half. For the hell out of the for the Hellraiser franchise, definitely four breath and a half. Breath of fresh air. It is a much needed <laughs> breath of fresh air. Yeah. I haven't. Even, I don't even think I've seen the last two movies. You have, I thought they were but they're very forgettable. Just seem. Mm. I like them, the stories anyways, but yeah, it's a great value pin hit. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> this one is great. Four and a half by both of us. And yeah, yeah. This is a shirt I had. This is our dog, Gemma. And I had Terrier Colt make her into the female. <laughs> so, yeah, that's our dog, Gemma. So, yes, there's Gemma. Our old gray face. Look, Gemma, over there. <laughs> Get him. Who is that? Ice. So yeah, there's our Gemma. Alrighty, so that is going to wrap up 2022 Hellraiser. Um, I mean, sign up for a free trial, man. You may have one or two commercials in it, but it's well, it's well worth a free trial. I mean, go out, support this movie. Um, then we may end it with a brief slideshow. I just do so many. It's another reason I'm glad we waited a week because the pictures that have been released um, behind the scenes in the last five days alone are awesome, and we not we would not have had them if we reviewed this last week. So that's going to do it. Support the movie. Um, it's great, even if you're just a casual horror fan. Yeah, I <laughs> agree. Like if you're just a casual watcher and you haven't seen any of the other movies, it's great. It is. You don't have to know anything to, you enjoy, don't, to enjoy this. Because it's so different. Well, it's it's just a, it's a very, we've said it a million times, it's just a good fresh <laughs> take on it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, so, you know. Hulu, Hellraiser, support it. And hopefully um, the next one will get a theatrical release, which there hasn't been a theatrical Hellraiser since Hellraiser 4 in 1996. So let's put the next one in theaters, guys. Go support it. And um, we will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for subscribing. Um, and thanks if you make it to the end of all these videos. I appreciate yeah, me too. all your views. And, uh, yeah, we will catch you on the next one. Bye. Say bye, Gemma, Gemma. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye, everybody. Quit the journey.